Hello my loves and welcome back to the Hottie Life YouTube channel. My name is Jessica Alexandria if we're meeting for the first time. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and this is Franklin here and that is my ice machine dropping some new fresh chunks of ice. I hope that you are well. There's a lot to talk about today and the weeks ahead up until September 3rd of this year. It's going to be quite a quite a doozy Venus retrograde. Now what does this mean for you? Venus rules our relationships, love, beauty, what we're attracted to, but also can be how we're spending our money. So when this planet goes retrograde, this means that the energy that it would normally be giving to us, pouring into us, it then says, you know what, I'm gonna take a break on this. I'm gonna pull within, I'm gonna retreat, and things around us kind of end up getting canceled. What does this mean for love relationships or how you feel about yourself? Well, that's what we need to talk about. That's what we need to discuss. So having said that, go ahead and grab some coffee, grab a tea, grab a glass of water or a snack, whatever it is that you're vibing with, and let's go ahead and dive right in. Like I said, Venus retrograde is significant because the energy of that planet that sometimes we don't even notice will then begin to retrace its steps and pull its energy back in inward. It will draw its energy internal. What does this mean for us? This means that wherever it was originally pouring into or how it was originally showing up, now that starts to switch, flip, and go back. Now, Venus currently is transiting through the sign of Leo, which is beautiful regardless of your sun, moon, or your rising sign. Leo does rule or infuse its energy into a major chunk of your chart, your natal chart, and also a chunk of your life. I wanna encourage you, of course, to do the own your own legwork and pull the chart up and see what Leo, this red little squiggly line, and I'm gonna link it down below so that you can see it, what that rules in your life. Look to see the, the pie slice of the chart, what number it rules, and I'll also put a little description of each one of those numbers down below, um, or even pin them in the comments so you can see. But for the most part, that's where this energy is going to be returning its energy back in. That's where its energy is going to go within. So what this can, how this can impact you overall is we'll see a hyper focus on relationships, love, connections, chemistry, all of those things naturally get called into question. So you may find yourself reflecting or reliving certain moments or conversations or the vibe of the relationship. Does it still feel like a good connection? Does there feel like there's something absent here? Are we missing intimacy? Are we missing conversation, connection? Those types of things. If, if you're in a relationship, if you are single, this is where your mind can drift back to past connections, past relationships. This can even happen if you're in a relationship, to be honest with you but our minds kind of drift back to the past. We're reliving, reconsidering, or being re-triggered or brought back to conversations, connections, dynamics, dilemmas of the past that our subconscious might still be digesting, might still need to fully understand. Now, what does this mean? Does this mean that you have to go back and relive that connection, reach out to that person? Not necessarily. If I were you, I would follow the lead of Venus. And as she is retracing and going back within, I would follow her steps and I would do the same thing. Maybe not necessarily go and chase past connections or chase or pursue um, problems of the past. I would allow myself to sit with it, reflect on it, and give myself extra ample space and room to digest the feelings that are being brought up during this Venus retrograde. Now, this is just exclusively relationships. What about the relationship that is that we have with ourselves? Don't forget that Venus does rule beauty and aesthetic. So this is one of those times where, especially in the sign of Leo, we might have this trait show up in a, in a way in our lives where this is what we need to feel beautiful. This is what we need to feel like we have worth or value or we're significant or worth looking at or worth listening to, worth hearing or worth expressing, whatever that looks like for you. For example, for me, I feel good. I feel great when I have, um, you know, no makeup on my face and conditioner in my hair. Or I'm walking around in a romper, this cotton romper from uh, Rihanna's line, Savage X Fenty, not sponsored by this video, or not sponsoring this video, but just side note, holy crap, this romper is fire. I'll link it that one down below. But um, yeah, I just feel really good typically in my skin. But 
if I'm going to present myself to the world, I feel even better when, and I feel confident and I feel beautiful in a, in a new way, a striking way when I draw on my eyebrows or I put plush, blush on my face or mascara or I slick my hair, whatever the case is, or allow my hair to be curly and you know do what it does. So it, it just depends on how I present to the world or and, and that energy shows, it helps me to feel good about myself. Um, let's say there's certain um, ways that you show up or things that you're drawn to or attracted to, this could be open to further discussion or exploration. That might be changing, especially now with so many planets retrograde or with the evolution, the growth, the transformation that has already occurred. Does how you are presenting or how you're taking care of yourself, does it reflect who you are now? And in the spiritual community, there's this sometimes um, aggression, I wanna say, or microaggression or tension when we go so deep and then we talk about these superficial things like our appearance or stuff or money or values. Are we allowed to talk about those things? Well, of course we are. We're Even though we're spiritual beings, we're still human beings. And when you look around, you know, there's a certain aesthetic of my home. Does this mean that I'm putting on a front or that I lack depth? No, this is just what makes me feel comfortable. And this is when I come home, the, the beauty and the, and the energy of the space gives life to me and it makes me feel comfortable. So that's also something that you do for yourself on how you dress up, how you show up for the world, but also your environment. Does the environment's aesthetic, does it express, does it support, does it nourish you, does it feel good for you? If not, Venus retrograde is a time to kind of shift that vibe and make it match how you feel within. Having said that, Venus retrograde, Franklin's like, I'm out. <laughs> I love him and his independent nature. Speaking of Leos, right? Um, having said that, let's say let's say you look around at your environment and it feels very blank. During the retrograde season or cycle, this would be a wonderful time for you to say, you know what, I could do some redecorating and some sprucing up of this energy or a sprucing up of this area. Or, you know, I haven't really, or maybe it's the reverse. Maybe you're always going, putting on makeup or dressing up and, you know, doing whatever, putting this on this elaborate. And the best thing that you need right now is to actually take it all off, to cleanse yourself, to wipe it off, to allow yourself to be bare, natural, and just radiate in that. Just honestly radiate in that and taking good care of yourself on, on that way too. For everyone, it's gonna be totally different. Speaking of shopping and money and spending, I do wanna say that for some of you guys, this is a wonderful time for you to go into resale, consignment shopping, selling things. This is a wonderful time to declutter your closet. Go in there, especially some of you guys are manifesting your partners. I, I've been hearing and seeing that a lot lately, especially with Pluto retrograde that um, you're really trying to connect with your soulmate connections and more deeper levels of intimacy in your connections and your relationships. I fully support that. One way to do that is actually to, de to declutter your closet, to declutter your space and make room for your partner to come in. I've actually had that conversation recently. Well, maybe not recently, but recently enough with someone, a new friend, and she's doing the same thing because she senses that the love of her life is about to come through. And honestly, I sense it too for her. So what I tell her to do, I said, girl, if you don't go in there and clean your closet out and make room for him to come through because she's, it's a husband that she's that she can sense and that she's looking for, then um, I don't know what to tell you. So this is a wonderful time for you to do that as well. I don't see many of us throwing things away. You can resell. If you're also looking to make extra money, Venus retrograde is a wonderful time. It's a natural time for people to start thrifting, consignment, cleansing, um, detoxing their stuff, um, putting things in the thrift, going, giving things to the thrift store um, or donating things. This is a wonderful time to tap into those types of energies. It's gonna feel really good for you. Having said that on the flip side, as you are decluttering, you might also feel called to gather some little valuable odds and ends or things of value to you. It could be things very small, like a, a, a plushie, like a teddy bear or something very significant, like a rock, like, well, like a diamond or something that has greater value to it. Venus retrograde rules these little tiny things that we can put our hands on that we are feel drawn to. We don't necessarily need them in our life, but we want them in our lives and they make us happy. So as Venus retrograde is happening, don't be surprised if you find yourself kind of curious and looking at to see what other people are 
donating or 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 selling um, stores like I think Macari or Poshmark or things that I've looked at or higher end things like Tradesy, which I think got bought by Vistere, or um, consignment shopping shopping locally, especially as this planet is transiting through the sign of Leo. Now. Let's move on to the next category that is that I want to talk to you guys about that Leo naturally rules dramatics and theatrics and just expression and art and dance and music and just life. Now, again, do we necessarily need it to survive? No, but it makes life worth living when there's beauty and music and sight and sound all around us in our environment. For, so for some of you guys, this is a wonderful time to infuse or reconnect or rediscover new elements of play and expression that make life, again, just so rich and worth living. As I say that, my chicken just popped his head out. He was like, you know, something that could help me make life worth living, feel like life is worth living is corn. You bring in corn? Like he's literally just peeping his head around the corner. Um, anyway, guys, side note, right? Co totally distracted. What am I missing? Oh, money, whew, so. I just talked about shopping and spending and thrifting and re-gifting and I need to talk to you guys about money. Now that's one thing that I think that we sometimes skim over with Venus is how it actually connects to, I don't wanna say the value of the dollar, but like where we're spending and how that spending impacts our bank, our budget, our sense of stability. It always kind of bleeds out. Every single aspect of our life will weave itself in one way or another into the other because everything is so connected. So of course money is here within the chart. So there is a really strong suggestion that redoing your budget and re-evaluating your lifestyle and where your money is going and flowing, that, that needs to be addressed or your eyes just need to look towards that a little more, a little closer. You could have a million subscriptions. Do you need every single one of those subscriptions to all the many different apps on your phone? Go on your phone, kind of reassess what still needs to keep draining your resources and your money and what can be cut off because you no longer use it or it doesn't have the value that you thought that it would bring into your life. This is where you reassess those um, pits that you don't want them to trip you up later on. Now, um, I do want to finish off by saying that there's, there's just always this question about like, what happens with my relationships, Jess? You know, can I find love during Venus retrograde time? Absolutely, yes. I have seen and I've coached people through and I've looked at people's charts and said that, listen, you're gonna meet your partner. You, your, your chart is prime for you to meet your partner. The whole world is gonna tell you that Venus retrograde is happening and that love can't happen or it won't last. That is simply not the case. Every chart is different, every circumstance is different. I would rather take the risk and put myself out there and try to find love, especially if the chart is supporting it versus allow that moment to pass and then never know. So can you find love? Yes. Do I recommend it? Absolutely. Love is always, real love, true love is always worth pursuing. If you do find love during this time, it may have a little turbulence, of course, all relationships do, but it tends to bring the turbulence to the forefront from the jump and it gives you the opportunity, if you're open-minded, to see it, to learn, to explore, God bless you, to see it, to learn, to explore, and to do a little different with uh, what you learn about your, your new person, what you learn about yourself. Now, in your current relationships, does Venus retrograde lead to breakups? Honestly, it can. Does it always? No. What it will do is it will bring up certain issues, problems, conversations, dynamics, and sometimes it's not always bad stuff. Sometimes it's just stuff that you've been, you keep putting off, maybe date night, it keeps getting pushed off, pushed off because you guys are both um, successful entrepreneurs and you guys have to go out of your way to make time for each other to sit down and have a date night you know i can totally attest to that in my own relationship one of the reasons why i asked for him specifically was not only because he's adorable but because we're both business owners where it takes it takes um a strong if you guys hear any heavy breathing the microphone is right here and franklin is just sat down in front of the microphone and he is notoriously for, notorious for snorting but Anyways, um, I specifically wanted someone who understood 
that my business is a huge part of my world, if not the whole the whole thing, you know, for me sometimes. And to not be threatened by that, but to also understand it, but be excited, you know, because he has his own stuff. And I just can't relate to someone who is a dreamer and not an actor, not a doer, you know what I mean? And he is 100%, he goes for it, he goes hard. There is, I have a crazy work ethic. I don't think in my entire 35, 36 years, I've met a lot of people ranging all different ages, all different parts of the US specifically. I've never met anyone with a work ethic as hard as he goes. It is insane. I look at him and I'm just like, it makes me look at myself. That's how you know. But I look at him and I'm like, I don't know how he does it. Like, but he does it. And then I look at myself and I'm like, girl, you're doing the same thing. But having said that, Venus retrograde, just a little example to put myself, my own intimate life out there, because you guys know I don't share details about my personal life, but I'm feeling more comfortable with that lately. But yeah, um, in my own, in my own, just for an example, that would be, it this Venus retrograde doesn't necessarily have to bring in problems. It can bring in excuses um, for you to reconnect, for you to find like another reason to be like, oh yeah, we did say we we're gonna do this. Let's prioritize that, let's do that. Or we've been doing a lot lately. Let's just sit on the sofa and let's, you know, well, that's the one thing that works for us, but for everyone's different, but we just love quality time and we're physical touch people. So um, this is a time to reconnect and it could be a very beautiful thing. Let's say that there are issues, conversations, points of contention, I guess, where you guys butt heads, you don't agree, or an unresolved issue, nine times out of 10, or I'll say this, seven times out of 10, that issue will come up during Venus retrograde. If not clearly in your face, then um, at least in the back of your mind. So this is an opportunity to begin to at least consider how you might approach this conversation with your partner. Um, and also this doesn't have to be a directly towards your relationship, it could also be your relationship with yourself. So having said that, with Leo energy, this is where we feel like, you know, how do you feel seen in this world? Do you feel like you have to overcompensate? Do you feel like you're seen? Do you feel like you're heard? And in order to get that value, in order to get that attention, which we all need, for some of you guys are like, oh, I don't need attention from anybody anywhere. The truth is, is that as human beings, we do need attention. We can't be invisible. Imagine walking this earth feeling completely invisible. Like some of you guys can relate to that. It's not okay, that's not comfortable, that's not good. So this brings the light to you so that you can be seen and loved for who you are from your heart, not by what you do, what you give, how you show up, how you appear. And this, specifically this retrograde will say that you are not what you look like, you are not what you purchase, you are not what you give to others. You are worth and deserving so much more and that comes unconditional, it should be unconditional love. And Leo energy rules the fifth house, it rules our children, it rules what we create and how proud we are of that. Let that be something that comes with no restriction and no wires or things that pull us back. You know what I mean? Like I gave this to you and now you owe me this. It's just like, I gave this to you because you make me happy. I, I, or I give this to myself because it brings me joy. No strings attached to it, none. That you're not no puppet. I didn't mean to say it like that, but you're not a puppet that's just dancing around for someone else's benefit. That you're here on earth and you're living your life because you know, it, and it brings you joy and it makes you happy. And that's really honestly what I'm setting intention for you during this Venus retrograde time. So is it very reflective? Yes. Is it all doom and gloom? No. Is it something that I look forward to? Yes. Is it something that you can look forward to? Absolutely. And I hope that, and I'm setting the intention that this Venus retrograde transit is everything that it can be for you in a good way and more. So there are a few other transits that's been going on. You guys have been, um, hearing me talk about the North Node and every sign, every time I talk about the North Node, I, I flub it up. It's just me and all the thoughts and all the things and I pull the charts on my own. Um, so I'm gonna uh, have a video about that coming up soon because the, it's there's a lot of change, a lot of transition that's happening right now. Um, globally, I know you guys can sense it and feel it. Oh, well, hello. Nova just jumped over the gate and she is joining us. <laughs> I always have to actually have her outside when I'm filming because she doesn't um, know how to give space. She's not really good at boundaries. She says that if you're breathing, I'm breathing your airspace too. She's very connected in that way. 
So anyways, my loves, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Please um, excuse the random thoughts. I do want to say this, and I honestly didn't even want to bring it to that point, but I want to say this, that um, I've been following this account, uh, Jenny, Jenny Apple, I forget her last name. Um, just a second. Yeah, Jenny Apple Ford. And um, they've been, they've been, they're following on YouTube. Like they're, I've been following them on YouTube channel, on, on their YouTube channel. I don't know how I crossed paths with them. I don't know how their YouTube channel was presented to me because I actually use most of my YouTube to listen to like ASMR or background music. So I don't really see other people's stuff. Every once in a while, I will watch, you know, lifestyle things or vlogs or something like that will come up. But this channel specifically, I don't know how it came to me, but for over a year, I've been watching her journey with the C word. I don't want to say it because it might be triggery for some. Um, and just recently, we were all kind of, as a, as a group, we were all kind of holding our breath because she kind of fell off for a little bit. She's spending time with family, but the concern was there, great. And she came back, they were doing some testings, we were all hoping for the best, and it came back not what they were hoping for. And I find it so interesting, and I know that you guys can relate, that you can have a connection with someone through YouTube. They don't, may not even know that you necessarily exist so much, but, and it's weird, because, you know, but you just have so much love for them and you hope the best for them and they feel like you're your friend or you're rooting for them or you're inspired by them. And specifically for me purpose, personally, I was, I'm always blown away by their ability to go through this crazy situation with, related to health and still the strength that they can find together as a family to stick together, to show up for one, you know, one another, to encourage each other and to be honest and to give hope and to even prioritize the children and bring joy and laughter. And I'm bringing this up right now because as I do this video and share this video with you guys today, it's a huge blessing to come on YouTube and, and pull these charts. But I am a little sad because of that news and it really, um, it just really makes me sad. Um, and I wanna ask you guys, to pray for them, to set intention for them, or maybe light a white light, a white candle, or a tea light for them, you know, one of the small ones, and just ask for peace and strength for them and their family right now, if you feel called in your heart. It also makes me remember that life is very important that we live our lives and that we show up with a full heart as often as we can that your vulnerability, this is another family that has just been really vulnerable and very transparent and very strong and strong in the sense that they, they, they share their feelings and their, their fear and their hope. And I know that every single one of us, we have that within us. And that's worth really, that's worth really leaning into as often as we can every day. And I know that for many of you, you know, sometimes you compare your pain or your journey or your joy to other people and just know that everything that you feel and you experience is so worth it and so valuable and so significant. And that's why I always come on here and I'm just so quick to give gratitude because we're connecting. And that's the other thing is like, you, we may not have been all sitting in the same room, but the love that is here on YouTube, my, when they posted, my heart broke and I cried. And I know that many of you guys we sit together too on on through YouTube, and it's a really interesting platform because we may again we may not necessarily be sitting in in the living room space, but we are sitting together. And um, as human beings, I'm just so grateful that we have this minimal, like a, just something to connect our hearts. There is a connection there, a link, a line, and a cord of some sort. And without any type of attachment, but just love and support and information and empowerment and faith. And I just really want to draw attention to how beautiful that is, how connected we all are, how when one person is suffering or if one person is happy, it impacts all of us and how aligned we all are and connected we all are. 
it is so good to be you, you know, like no matter what we're going through, it's so good to be you because you are an, another person who can connect with another person. I don't know, I don't know another way to say that. And I just really want to take this. I know we're talking about Venus retrograde right now, but you guys know how I am. I just really want to take this moment, last, last final note that, you know, keep be nice to yourself. Um, I know we're all excited about certain things and looking forward to certain things and struggling with certain things and crying about certain things and stressed out about certain things. But regardless of where you're at in this moment right now, try to be easy on yourself and give yourself so much grace and invite in so much grace from the universe. Me personally, you know, I'm, I try to do my best and to show up and no one, believe me, no one is harder on me than me. And I, I really try to remind myself to give myself that same grace and that same patience and that same love that I coach you guys through all the time. And um, at the end of the day, like if that's all that we're doing, then that's all that matters. And as long as you're just trying to attempt to connect and be a person that is bringing light into this, to this world, even one person, especially now, you have, have and are living in a true magical purpose. And um, I'll say this, I really set the intention that peace really authentically, truly floods your heart and floods your whole world and floods your home and floods your car and floods your purse and your backpack or your wallet, like just peace. And I set the intention that love, unconditional love flow from you towards you, around you, abundantly let it flow. That not one moment that you don't feel seen or heard or loved, I hope that you are acknowledged. I hope that you are supported. I hope that you have faith. I hope that you are healthy. If there are things, ailments that you're struggling with, chronic or temporary, I hope that they give you rest. I hope that they subside. I hope that they go away. Um, and I just wish you well, honestly, I wish you well. And I ask that you guys wish each other well, whether that be in the comments or whether it just be that, you know, if you say it out loud or you whisper it under your breath, a minimum, I wish you well, I wish you well. And I hope that it comes from a genuine place because at the end of the day, we're all human. We're all trying. We all mostly want the same things. And, um, you know, that's good. That's good. I don't know. It's just, it's just good. So again, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. It's a blessing. I say it all the time, but I'm so grateful for the time that is that we have together because it's real. Um, unbelievable, but so real. Um, until then, I do invite you to subscribe to this YouTube channel. You are welcome to. If not, if you're passing through, it was a blessing. It was an honor. It was good for me. I hope it was good for you. It's definitely good for Franklin because he's snoring right, <laughs> right now. Here he comes. Um, until then, you guys, I'll see you in my next video. I'll send you guys all my love, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.